Hi, and welcome to Maths with Anna Lou. In this, we're going to be looking at reading, writing, ordering, and comparing large numbers up to 1 million for our functional skills level 1. The learning objectives set by Edexcel for this are that we need to be able to read and write numbers up to 1 million, both written in words and using digits, explain the value represented by a specific digit in a given number up to a million, place numbers up to a million in ascending and descending order, and compare numbers up to a million using greater than and less than symbols. The key words for today's lesson are on the screen now. Um, I've written the um, description in red of some of the more well used one. So place value is the value based on the numbers position. So this is one of the things we're going to be looking at in the lesson. For example, one, two, three, 123, that two is a 10, that two is 20. So it is in the tens column. The columns that we've got, the units, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, millions, etc. That's what we're going to be looking at in today's lesson. A digit is any number between zero and nine. Integer means whole number. And these next two words are very important. Ascending is putting things smallest to largest and descending is largest to smallest. Um, in our exams, it's not going to say place these numbers smallest to largest. It's going to say place these numbers in ascending order. So one, two, three is ascending. Three, two, one is descending. So there's some other words there and they're words we're going to be looking at as we go through. The most common misconceptions, so where people lose the most marks in this particular topic, are miscounting or misunderstanding the value that the position of the number gives it. So, for example, 1, 2, 3, that 1 is 100, but if you thought that 1 was a 10, that would be misrepresenting the value. And misplacing the value that the digit represents in large numbers which have a zero. So, for example, that number on the screen there is 10,148. But I have seen people in the past not understand that the zero is there to show a lack of thousands and it's um, and think that that is 1,148. So place value and ordering. The ordinary counting system, which is what we use, uses place value, which means that that um, value depends on where it is. So, for example, in this number, 5,348, that five is five thousands, the three is three hundreds, the four is forty or four tens, and the eight is eight units or eight. So we need to be able to understand what each of those digits represent. So we would write and say this number is 5,348. It's really important that we're comfortable with numbers both in words and in digits, and that we can transpose one to the other. Let's look at a larger number. So if I had this number, that four is four million. So there's always six numbers after the million. So there's always six numbers afterwards. We use commas in maths and commas come in handy to help us understand what place value is. Now a comma is after every third number from the left. So we know that this first number is the thousand. So one thousand would be one and three zeros, and we could put a comma in there to help us read it. So every third number, so one million, would be one and six numbers afterwards. So every third number, we put a comma. Um, this is the same as in English. It helps us to be able to better read that number. So we've got no hundred thousands in this. Um, we've got seven, which is the 70,000. We've then got the three, which is our 3,000. The five is 500. The two is two tens. And we've got no units. So this number would be written or said as 4,073,520. This is the place value system. We'll be looking at decimals in a different lesson, so I'm only just doing the whole numbers at the moment. So we've got our millions, our hundred thousands, our ten thousands, our thousands, our hundreds, our tens and our units. I would recommend writing this down as this is something we do need to be very comfortable with. As I said, we usually put a comma every third number, so I would have a comma there and a comma there if I was writing it. So as I say, I would recommend writing this down. 
I would like us to have a little bit of a practice at this because this is something that follows and questions such as these ones on the screen at the moment come up all the way up to GCSE as well. So in this task, I would like you to write the value of each underlying digit. So we'll do the first one together. So in this one, I've got three, four, one. So I've got one unit, four tens and three hundreds. The number will be spoken as 341, but for the value, for the case of this exercise it wants the value of the underlined it's the four that's underlined so that underlined four represents 40 so it represents 40 or it represents four tens so i'm happy that you just write it as the numbers so have a go at this i would like you to pause this recording give this exercise a go and then we'll look at the answers so pause this recording now Okay, let's check out those answers. So the answers are on the screen. So please pause this and give a chance to mark your own. If there's any you didn't get, don't worry, have another look and have a look at the answer. As I say, we've concentrated on whole numbers in this one. We will be looking at decimals in another lesson. Okay, so now that we can identify what each individual digit is, Let's have a look and see if we can turn them into words and turn them into numerals or digits. So again, I would like you to pause the recording and give this a go. These top numbers, oh, I'm sorry. These top numbers I've got in um, digits and I would like you to turn those into words for me, please. So the bottom numbers I've got in words, I would like you to turn those into digits for me. So this top one, is we'll do the first one of each together so this top one i know that's a million because it's got six numbers afterwards so i know it's five million so let's have a look at the rest of this this is six hundred thousand and there's no other numbers all the rest of zeros are placeholders so it's five million six hundred thousand So let's have a look at exercise two. So eight million. So I'll do my eight and I'll do my comma because I know a comma comes after a million. 200,000. So 200,000 and 58. So no hundreds and 58. So pause this and give this a go. As I say, this is something that we really need to be comfortable with. Okay, hopefully you've had a go at those. I'll pop the answers on. So have a look at these for me. Again, pause to give you time to mark it. Mark your own with these. If there's any you didn't get, go back and have another look. Rewatch this video on place value if you need to. So ordering. When ordering numbers, we're using our place value. So, for example, if we had to put these numbers in order, put the smallest first, so we're sending order. One of the things I've seen people do in the past is write the numbers on top of each other. Some people find that easier. Um, so I'm not going to do that due to space, um, but some people do find it easier. Oh, I can fit it here. Some people do find it easier to write those numbers. So 7031. I will try again. So some people do find it easier. What I'll do is I'll write them underneath the first one. So I've got 7,031. That second number, I had 3,071. Then I had 7,103, 7,130, and 1,730. So some people find it easier to list them on top of each other. Now, when we're putting things in order, we should look at things by their place value. So we'll look at the thousands first, then our hundreds, then our tens, then our units. So we want the smallest first. We want ascending order. So let's look at the thousands and find the smallest number. So my smallest number, I've got seven, three, seven, seven and one. So my smallest number is the one. 
So my first number is going to be 1730. I'm going to cross that out so that I know I've used it. So let's have a look. 7377. Seven, seven. Okay, so three is the next one. So I've got 3071 is my next number. Again, cross them out as you go along. So now I've got 777. Seven, seven. So there's nothing else I can do in the thousands because they're now all the same. So I'm going to move into my hundreds column. So I've got 011. One, one. Well, zero is the smallest of those. So I've got 7031. Now let's have another look. I've got one and one. So again, can't do anything. My thousands are the same. My hundreds are the same. So I'm going to look at my tens. I've got a zero and a three. So the zero is the smallest. So 7103 comes next. And then last but not least, I've got 7130. So I've put them all in order. I've crossed them up as I've gone. I've seen a few people lose marks on questions like these if they've been given, say, seven numbers, but they've only written six numbers in their answer. So make sure you tick or circle or cross them out as you go. So when we're looking at the place value and we're putting things in order, look at them from the highest value. So work from left to right to put them into order. OK, again, I would like you to pause the recording and give these a go. So these first two lots, I'd like you to put them in ascending order. So smallest first and the second two, I'd like you to put them in descending order. So largest first. Don't forget, if you're not comfortable with the words ascending and descending, please write those down. So pause the slides and give these a go. OK, let's have a look at those answers. So pause if you need to and mark these. Again, if you've made any mistakes, just jot down the correct answer. OK, so one of the other things we need to be happy with is symbols. So we've got our greater than or less than symbol. So this symbol here is our greater than symbol. So and it's showing that the number on the left is greater than the number on the right. So, for example, 10 is greater than 8. We've got this symbol, which represents our less than symbol. So 8 is less than 10. I've heard people before say to think of crocodiles with these and that the crocodile always eats the larger number. So where the opening is, that's where the larger number is. Um, so the, again, these are going to follow us all the way up to GCSE. They come a lot up quite a lot in algebra in GCSE. So it's going to be something we need to be comfortable with. There's five symbols altogether that we use. So the two we've just looked at, two that are slightly different, and then our equal symbol at the bottom. I want you to pause and have a think and see if you know what these mean before I put the answers on. Let's have a look at what these mean. So we've got our less than, our greater than, our less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, or our equal to. So if you have trouble with these, with numbers three and four, just think of the symbol it represents and the fact that it's like that symbol and the equal sign pushed together. So it's less than or equal to. As I say, don't forget the crocodile eats the bigger number. So the, if I had um, 72 and 10, my bigger number is the one with the opening. OK, I want you to give these a go. So pause. This is some practice of place value from earlier and also some practice of turning uh, words into numbers. So pause the recording, give these a go for me, please. OK, let's have a look at those answers. So I've popped the answers on, mark your own. Again, if there's some you didn't get, jot the right answer down and have another look. Let's have a look at some exam style questions that have come up in the past. Now in this one, the rowing club is writing a cheque to present to the charity. The total amount collected for the charity is £12,096. Write £12,096 in figures on the cheque. So we can see we've got it in words, £12,096. So we, we've got 12000 
If we want to put a comma after our thousand, we can. So £12,096. The main mistake I've seen people make in the case of this one is that they would just write 1296. But don't forget, we've got our 10,000, thousand, hundreds, tens and units. We've no hundreds. So 12,000, no hundreds and 96. Uh, 12,096. The most common wrong answer I see for this is 12,096. That says 1,296, so that's not correct. We need to be able to realise that there's no hundreds in this. Um, but as you know, we don't say that. We wouldn't say 12,000, no hundreds and 96. We just need to know our place value enough to know that there's no hundreds. Let's have a look at one more exam question. So this one was a three mark question and this one's from a non-calculator paper. So a music festival sells tickets on its website. There are 120,000 tickets for sale. Eight, 118,200 tickets are sold in the first hour. How many tickets are still for sale after the first hour? So I know it's a takeaway because it's told us what I've started with and what I've sold and it wants what's left. So it's a three mark question. I'm going to show you the mark scheme in a second. So the first thing I need to do is there's 120,000 tickets for sale. So it's 120,000. I'll show you the mark scheme in a moment, but I know because I know the mark scheme that that's mark number one. I've got mark number one for writing this in its correct numerical format. So 118,200 tickets were sold and it wants to know what's left. Again, I know the mark scheme, so I know I'm now at mark number two for correctly identifying that it's a takeaway. We will be looking at addition and subtraction and multiplication and division in another video. So if you're not sure how to do those, we will be looking at those in another video. So let's work this out. Zero take away zero is zero. Zero take away zero is zero. Zero take away two. I can't do that. I can't take zero away from two. So I'm going to have to borrow. Can't borrow off a zero, so I'm going to have to borrow off this two. So that turns into a one. Now, again, we're going to be looking at subtraction in a later video. When we've borrowed off a number, it can only give to the one on its right. Because what I've done is I'm taking that, that one I've just borrowed is a 10,000. So that's why I'm putting it in this column as a 10. So I still can't take two away from zero. So I'm going to borrow from this 10 now. So that'll make that a nine and that a one. So 10 take away two is eight. Nine take away eight is one. One take away one is zero. And one take away one is zero. So how many tickets are left? There's 1,800 tickets left. The three mark question. As promised, here's the mark scheme. As I said, while we were going through it, we were getting mark number one for writing the number in figures. We were then getting a mark to show it was a subtraction. As you can see from the mark scheme, if something's in brackets, that means we don't need it for that mark. So we don't, we didn't need our final answer. And it says figure take away 118200. So if we'd misrepresented that number, we would have still got this mark for knowing it was a subtraction, providing we knew that number went first. And mark number two then was for our final answer. So we were getting mark number one for writing it in words. Mark number two was for knowing it was a subtraction. And mark number three was for our final answer. So that's how we deal with large numbers. As I say, these can crop up on calculator papers or non-calculator papers, as you've just seen. And um, so we need to be very, very comfortable with when figures are expressed both in words and in numbers. So thank you very much for joining me for this. If you have any questions, pop them in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.